know your enemy. Your life is in the balance every day that you awake because you do not know your enemy. You spend all day thinking about how to impress people, what clothes to wear, how best to seduce a woman, how to get people to like you so you can use them, have someone call you for a date, that you do not stop and think and ask what forces are acting in my life causing me to fail. You have not surveyed your life asking the question, why is there more rain in my life than sunshine? Why do I keep hurting myself and others? What is wrong? Why am I thinking the way I think? Why do I think it is smart to cheat, lie, and to steal? Why am I who I am? Instead of rushing out every morning, you need to sit down and take stock of your life. You need to sit down and ask yourself, who have I brought into my life that is causing problems in my life? Yes, there is a person or persons in your life that is changing the tide of your life that is causing you to self-destruct. You are relying upon their advice. You admire them. You think they're smarter than you. You think they have all the answers because you believe the facade they are presenting. They are whispering in your ear at work or at home or at play, and they are causing you to make unwise decisions. These people are called the third voice. Who is the third voice in your life that you are listening to that is causing problems in your marriage? Who is the third voice causing problems on your job? Now don't be a fool and convince yourself that the third voice in your life is your girlfriend is telling you not to go to the bar and bring a man home. She is not the third voice in your head causing destruction. She is not why you do not have a boyfriend that turns into a husband. It is a voice that is advising you to be wicked. That is the third voice. The voice that says you need to get into the groove by sticking your breast out and going to bed with your girlfriend's husband or dance topless at the bar because it is fast money than working at McDonald's. Working at McDonald's is stupid. Marrying and buying a house and paying taxes is for fools. You should use your vagina to get a man or use your penis to punish women. You should sell dope for a living. You should not pay your brother-in-law back the money he loaned you. You should run two or three women at a time and not pay child support. This is the third voice. This is a voice that's seducing you. But do not put all the responsibility on the third voice because this voice could not seduce you if you did not listen to it. If you had a good heart, if you are selfish and self-centered, this voice will get you every time. So when you try to find a third voice in your life causing problems, first look to yourself and ask, am I lending myself to self-destruction? When you take assessment of your life, ask yourself, how blameless am I? What changes do I need to make in my life to turn it around? The first change you should make in your life is to change you. The second change to make in your life is to change your friends, those that do not contribute peace and health into your life. Anyone who tells you to use your vagina to get money should be removed from your life. Anyone who tells you to rob a liquor store, go to a bar instead of studying for an exam or take another hit of the crack pipe or selling drugs should be removed from your life. As you are removing these people from your life, Move to another address so they cannot find you. Remember, your life is in the balance every time you leave the home when you do not know who your enemy is. If you have not made any significant changes for the good in your life, the enemy in your life may be you. A discussion of the trial of the mind. More time should be spent instructing children how to think rather than telling them what to think. If we teach our children how to process information, and how to avoid making emotional judgments and assumptions, we would have far fewer murders in this country. Almost no time is spent in the classroom teaching children how to think. So when they grow up to still, they still do not know how to bridle envy and jealousy. Children are told to digest mounds and mounds of facts and to be prepared to regurgitate these facts at will. Consequently, when children get in trouble with their emotions, they do not know how to respond and explosions occur. I like a shiny red truck. I do not have a shiny red truck. Robert has a shiny red truck. I want Robert's shiny red truck. I think I will hit Robert and take his shiny red truck. What does a person do with emotions such as jealousy, envy, and hatred? I like Bob. Gloria says Bob likes girls with large breasts. 
I do not have large breasts. Brenda has large breasts. Since Brenda has large breasts, Bob will like Brenda. I hate Brenda because Brenda has large breasts, causing Bob to like her. How can I get rid of Brenda? The test in life is how well you handle your thoughts. How well do you evaluate what you are thinking? What do you think about all day? What thoughts flow in and out of your mind every day? How well do you handle these thoughts when they are disruptive, when these thoughts upset you or make you angry? How well do you handle envy, jealousy, and hatred? Do you allow these thoughts to fester until they become unbearable? How often do you plot the demise of that man or woman you hate because they married and they have someone to care for them? How often do you tell lies at work because you are jealous of your co-workers? Why do you refuse to face the fact that you are too lazy to go back to school to provide a better life for your children? Why is it so hard for you to face the fact that your neighbor is getting ahead in life because he's willing to work two jobs to provide for his family? Why don't you evaluate your thoughts when you see a woman whose breasts are larger than yours? Why are you always looking for a married man to date? And why is it so important to you to reap satisfaction from making your supervisor look foolish? Why not read a book that will help you develop the process of resolving one's thoughts? Come on, use your brain. How can you be a man's fiance when he's married? The average man who cheats on his wife will sooner or later decide it makes no sense to exchange his wife for you and disrupt his life. He knows what kind of woman he has at home and he knows what kind of woman you are. Why do you hate George so much? He works two jobs to buy the pretty red truck that women like so well. George must really get your goat if you spend every day plotting how to seduce his wife. Do you really think taking his wife to bed will make you the man George is? Buying yourself a Cadillac is not going to make you the man you want to be. You need to change and take responsibility for yourself and your family. You need to pick up a book, educate yourself, and change and fulfill your life's purpose.